F-Zero, the first game in the series of the same name, was released as a launch title from Super Famicom on November 21st, 1990. It's a racing game in which you can play as four racers across 15 different tracks. We haven't covered any racing games so far in the deepest lore, so I think the best way to handle this would be to discuss each major character, and then all of the different course locations. I'll probably include time codes in the description, so if you want to jump around, feel free to do so. Also, we're going to be compiling not only the original F-Zero in here, but also the two Satellaview titles, which have no stories of their own and more so seem like expansions to the base game. But first of all, the story. F-Zero takes place in the far-off year of 2560, where the Earth has managed to spread its arms across the universe, expanding the planet's infrastructure and the wealth of its top 1%. The ultra-wealthy felt a need for a new type of entertainment, and someone had the bright idea of recreating the classic F1 races so popular in our era using the equipment of the time. The multi-billionaires jumped at a chance to be part of this and spent unfathomable swaths of cash on making the best courses. Held on multiple planets, hundreds of feet off the ground, even in some locations utterly inhospitable to biological life, these tracks were built. As the vehicles in use were super magnetic zero gravity machines, and since the races themselves were based on Formula One, these races were given the name of F-Zero. The F-Zero competitions were brutal, and at first highly controversial. But as time went on, the damage became normalized. And eventually, to keep fans invested, the stakes were raised even higher, in many cases with destroying other machines being heavily incentivized. Over time, F-Zero races became the most popular sport in the known universe. That actually sounds frighteningly realistic, all things considered. The Earth spreading its influence across known space, the planet's ultra-rich just continuing to gain wealth while society became more and more desensitized to violence. This particular Grand Prix featured a who's who of fantastic racers. Dr. Robert Stewart is actually a member of the ultra-wealthy class that created the F-Zero races, being a well-known and highly accomplished medical doctor hailing from Mute City. Despite being one of those intended to watch the race, he ended up joining it after the death of his father, Professor Kevin Stewart, who designed their family racing machine. This machine, known as the Golden Fox, is built entirely for acceleration and can get up to top speed faster than any other machine in the race. However, due to the light materials used in its construction, the Fox is also the most liable machine to be damaged. Stewart himself is boastful and vain, enjoying the attention brought onto him from being a celebrity racer, but eschewing the prize money. Pico is an alien who, for a time, served in the Porpido army of Deathwind. Pico is highly aggressive, and his ship, the Wild Goose, was built not to be fast, but to be deadly. Pico's main strategy is to destroy his opponent's machines. Not only is Pico a racer, but he's also a deadly and competent hitman off the track. Our third racer, Samurai Goro, is a bit of a roughie. He's a Japanese-American man who at one point wanted to be a bounty hunter. But as he was beaten time and time again by Captain Falcon, he eventually became a thief, leading a group of bandits in Red Canyon. Goro holds a long-standing rivalry and hatred for Captain Falcon. Despite this, he still hides his origins as a thief to the public eye. His machine, the Fire Stingray, is believed to actually be stolen property. Despite being slow to accelerate, the Stingray has the highest top speed out of any of the race, and is a force to be reckoned with. Goro's main reason for joining the races isn't money or fame, but instead a personal rivalry with Captain Falcon. The Captain is a native of Port Town, probably in his early 30s. While he's best known as a racer, he also acts as a brutal and efficient bounty hunter, tracking down the scum of society. He drives the Blue Falcon, a machine modified by Falcon himself for ease of control. I'm going to take a little time to discuss Falcon here because Let's be honest, he's the one you're all here to see. Being an SNES game with absolutely no in-game dialogue, you can only learn so much about this man, and he clearly prefers it that way given how little info about him is solidly known in his character bio. But, thanks to the comic included in the back of the manual, we get to see a day in his life, 
just before the beginning of the Night League in this game. The comic follows Falcon as he prepares for the F-Zero race in Mute City. However, before he can get to the race, he has a few loose ends to clean up. The first of these is named Scalehead, a wanted murderer. The two get into an altercation, and Captain Falcon shoots Scalehead dead. The only time we see him fire his pistol in the entire series. However, to catch Scalehead, Falcon had to wander into Red Canyon, in doing so angering Samurai Goro, who was also hoping to take the bounty on Scalehead's scaled head. Falcon is able to escape in his spaceship, the Falcon Flyer, and Goro swears revenge. This event is his reason for joining the F-Zero races, where it's mentioned that he was a last-minute entry. But Scalehead isn't the only piece of criminal scum on Falcon's list. When he lands in Mute City, instead of going directly to the race location, he stops by to meet up with an unnamed man in a mustard-colored suit with a bounty on his head for 30 times what Scalehead was worth. Falcon once again proves his abilities in hand-to-hand -hand combat before taking the man in and finally arriving for the race. He has some banter with the other playable characters, and then they begin the Night Cup, placing the events of this comic right before the start of the main game. Notably, the comic includes multiple characters and items not present in-game, but would appear later in the franchise. The Falcon Flyer, Captain Falcon's spaceship, never really made an appearance in the main series, but it has shown up multiple times in Smash Bros, starting with the Big Blue stage in Melee. This was also, as earlier mentioned, the first and only time Falcon has been shown to actually use his gun, though he still has it in later games. Lastly, the announcer for the F-Zero race in this comic is Mr. Zero, the cyborg announcer who made his first in-game appearance in F-Zero X. That's all the characters in this game. In wrestling terms, Pico and Goro are placed as the heels, being thieves and murderers, while the faces of the game are Dr. Stewart and, of course, Captain Falcon, who would go on to be the most iconic character in the franchise. That said, all of these races will continue to show up in later games. The Satellaview titles also included four new vehicles. The Blue Thunder, the Lena Bomber, the Green Amazon, and the Fire Scorpion. That said, nothing is really known about their make or their drivers, though each neatly parallels one of the vehicles from the main game. This is, the Satellaview titles don't exactly have a story, but we'll talk about potential plot points for these in the F-Zero X discussion. The game also features 15 different tracks set on 9 different planets. Formerly known as Mutant City, this is the biggest city in the entire known universe. And no, we never know why it got the name Mutant City. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any characters referred to as mutants in the main continuity. So that's just kind of a bit of background that's never explained. It's an intergalactic trade hub and has a population of over 200 million people. Being so large and important, it is the first stop in all the F-Zero Grand Prix featured in the game. It is the home of Dr. Stewart. Big Blue is a planet covered almost entirely in water. That's all the manual really says about it. Sand Ocean, as the name implies, is a planet mostly made up of desert. While once there were some primitive animals found here, they have long since died off and remain only as fossils. The home of Pico? Deathwind is named for the fierce winds that constantly blow across its surface, making the planet uninhabitable. Silence is a soundless planet, hence the name. No matter where you are on its surface or what you do, you will be met with an eerie silence. There always needs to be an ice level, and F-Zero is no exception. White Lane is not named for its snow, but instead the crystalline structures found throughout the planet. The home of Captain Falcon, Port Town is another hub for intergalactic trade, though not quite as huge as Mute City. It's known as one of the most demanding courses in the pre, and is not taken without caution from drivers. Red Canyon is the home of Samurai Goro and his thieves. Little else is known about this area, however. Firefield is the final course and the most difficult of the three leagues in the game. It was once a great place to harvest minerals. However, the company is mining the place dug too deep and accidentally unleashed a supervolcano that turned the entire planet into a fiery hellscape. The F-Zero track is the only sign of civilization remaining on the planet, 
and was the company's last-ditch effort to make money on their investment. And as far as I can tell, that's all the lore pertaining to the original F-Zero. There's a lot of information in this video, but not a lot to bring it all together. That said, what this game does bring forward paints a startlingly clear picture of the world it takes place in. A sci-fi universe controlled by the rich, faceless elites, and masked by adrenaline-pumping action. The Teleview games are generally accepted to take place either during or soon after F-Zero SNES. Also, it's generally canon that Captain Falcon wins it all, and his route in any game generally leads to the canon ending. If you want to play the game, it's available on Nintendo Switch Online. Next week, I'm going to bring out a discussion for the other launch title for the Super Famicom, Super Mario World. I'll see you all then.